just look forward to what God's going to do with us moving forward. And I hope you are as well. So uh, with that said, a couple of announcements to make. We have a, uh, an opportunity for a youth person. Uh, we're trying to grow our youth group here, and, and we're in need of a youth person. And so uh, we're going to be taking applications on that, running through the rest of this week. And if we can't, well, then we're going to need some parents just to step up and say, you know what, we'll be a part of that. And I think it's going to be a, a great opportunity. Uh, parents, grandparents, people that don't have kids that like youth group. You know, uh, I was a former youth pastor, and I didn't think that I would like it because I, I, I have two kids, and there's days in which I wonder whether I like them. And, and so having um, been a part of a youth group, I can tell you that they change your heart and they will change your lives. And so if you're your parents or grandparents or you don't have kids and you want to be a part of the youth group, come see me. Um, with that said, we also have a... Uh, Mike and Sharon Newbert are going to be starting to, uh, on Wednesday nights, starting next Wednesday, they're going to be having a three-week series for just youth of how to interpret the Bible. And, and you don't have to know anything about it. That's the, that's the brilliant part. Because a lot of times students will go in and go, I don't know anything about the Bible. Good. That's what we're looking for. So uh, if you would like to be a part of that, let me know because I'm going to let Shara know uh, this week how many students she has. It's kind of limited because they're going to be teaching it at their house. So, and, and just stay tuned for where we're going in worship services. Okay, We're, we're all talking about that. We know that there's going to be a moment in which we're going to have to go inside here pretty soon. So uh, we, we know all of this and we're working on it. We've got a a lot of options and a lot of plans, so just stay tuned, okay? And, and here's the cool part. We got another baptism today. This will make three in five weeks. You know, and a lot of people say, well, churches have closed. God is not closed. God is still saying, bring them. Continue to bring them. And we're going to have, Aspen's going to be baptized here in just a little bit. We're going to ask the family to come up, and, and we're going to have that baptism. Uh, if you would, you should have received your communion cups. Make sure that you receive those because they'll be coming up here in a little bit. And uh, there were some green prayer cards. If you have those and you want to fill those out at offering time, you can go put those in the baskets. We've got one located on each side. Last but not least, I want to give a thank you to this band. That every week, come out here, yeah, are here at 7.30 every Sunday morning to get set up. They sing their songs, they tear down while everybody else is fellowshipping and everything, and they haul everything back in, only to bring it back out the following week. And so I just thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for everything that you've done since June. And if you would, please stand if you're able, and get ready to sing this first song with them. They reminded me I forgot something. If you're new here, we get excited about Jesus, okay? I haven't got there yet, Jesse. <coughs> Hang on just a second. Now, if, how many of you know who Ric Flair is? Okay, what is Ric Flair known for? Woo! That's it. So when I say welcome to worship, you give me your best F Ric Flair imitation, okay? Welcome to worship. Woo! We're ready, let's go. They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now I'm losing bad. I've stood on the stage night after night Reminding the broken it'll be all right For now, right now I just can't It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down And what would I say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? Well, I know you're able and I know you can Save through the fire with your mighty hand But even if you don't My hope is you alone
They say it only takes a little faith to move mountain. A good thing, a little faith is all I have right now. But God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable, oh, give me the strength to be able to sing. It is well with my soul. I know you're able and I know you can. Save through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know the sorrow and I know the hurt would all go away if you just said the word. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. You've been faithful. You've been good all my days. Jesus, I will cling to you. Come with me. I know you're able, I know you care. I know you're able, and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand. And even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know the sorrow, and I know. You just said the word, but even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I hope in you alone. It is well. It is well, it is well with my soul. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, this is a time uh, that we do greetings and under COVID-19, um, we probably just since we're all standing here, let's just wave to each other. Wish each other a glorious morning. It is a beautiful morning. On behalf of the Praise Band, I'm, I'm Tim Warren, and I also want to introduce Dave Porter, who's singing with us for the first time this Sunday. He's got a great voice. Uh, we're glad to have him. And Jessica is up here as well. And, and uh, this has been an unusual morning from the standpoint of, you know, the challenges of the temperature. It was 49 degrees when we got set up this morning, 45 degrees messes with uh, the guitar necks and tuning and all of that. Well, we had technical difficulties with the speakers, and, and so this speaker over here isn't working this morning. But bear with us. We're trying to give you the best possible music we can. So with that, um, we'll move on. All right. We have a baptism. Everybody may be seated. But don't think you're going to just get the chance to relax here. Because I'm going to ask for the, the family to come up. Whoever wants to come up, come on up. And we're going to baptize this young lady. She's sleeping? Okay. She never sleeps. She never sleeps. <laughs> all right. So... With this, I'm going to ask you all some questions, but I want you to take a look because we know we've got godparents and grandparents. And Are you all excited? Yeah. Are you all happy about this? Yes. Are you all happy about this? <laughs> because, get this, you guys get to be godparents too. You didn't sign up for that today, I know, but you get an opportunity to bring Jesus we're going to be talking a lot about that here in a little bit, to this young life, to this family, 
and you get to walk alongside of them. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to, we've got a few words here in Scripture that we're going to be talking about. And then I've got a couple questions I'm going to ask all of you and all of you, okay? So you all get to answer. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift Offered to us without price. So I ask you these questions. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. And church, will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? I do. I will. All right. The Lord be with you and also with you. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water, and after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. So now I ask you, what is the name of this child? Aspen Ava Scott. Oh, yeah. Aspen Ava Scott. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, yeah. She's like, oh, this is good. <laughs> what you have to understand is we never know what the temperature is going to be. So Sonia had some warm water here, and it's like bath water. So when I put my hand in it, I was like, oh, this is going to be good. And she even was like, ah, where's the soap? You know, type of thing. This is awesome. Let's, let's hear it for our new child in Christ that's come into this kingdom today. Aspen Ava Scott. That's for you, sweetie. Congratulations to all of you. you. All right. It's a glorious day. It is a glorious day in the house of the Lord. And that house of the Lord just happens to be out on a lawn. The house of the Lord is everywhere. And today... Whenever we come up for our offering, and this is our time for offering, this is our time of giving back. A lot of times you'll hear me say, we give because of different ministries in the church, and we do, uh, you know, we do give for that, uh, for the upkeep and, and for personnel reasons. But here's what I want you to take away. For those of you who are here and those of you who are watching online, it's a bigger sacrifice than just that. It is a time in which we do realize that there are a lot of things going on, a lot of job loss, a lot of um, situations out of our control. But today I ask you to give because it is a commandment from God. It's not a commandment from whatever church logo is on or whatever church we go to or whatever church we attend. This is an opportunity of God saying, I have gifted you this week. Gift me in return. 
In Scripture, it has said 10% of whatever we, whatever we have given this week or whatever we have received this week, we give back. It's not an offering of saying, ah, oh, well, you know, I feel obligated or I feel coaxed into it or I feel pressured into giving money. It should never feel that way. It should always be that I am giving back because this is a worship service to God. This is not a worship service to whoever you're sitting next to. This is not a worship service to me. This is not a worship service to the band. This is your worship service given to God. And whenever we think of it that way, we look at our finances and say, you know what? We, we have made it. We have got to this point this week. And so when you are giving your offering, whether it be in paper form or whether you're online, you can go to our website, firstwashingtonumc.org, go to the donations tab, and you can give as much or as little as you wish. But know that you're giving from your heart, not the leftovers, not what you feel like you should do, but what God is commanding you to do. So today, make this offering a little bit different than normal. This isn't going to be a, an offering in which I say, we give to a certain ministry or give to these ministries. Ministries are happening all over in this community. And God is saying, give to me because you want to worship me. Not because you want to worship anything else, but worship me. And as we do so today, as you come forward, you can come forward anytime during worship and put your offering in. If you filled out those green cards and you want to put those in, that's great. If you're online with us, welcome. We're glad you're with us. If you want to uh, give online, like I said, you go to that donations tab. And if you have a prayer request, please send it in to us. Let us know where you're watching from. This is a special time in this worship service and giving back to God what he has gifted to us and has blessed us with this week. As we do so, we're going to hear another song right before we get to go into our teaching time. Come, give as, as your heart is telling you to give today. Thank you. 
Let's pray. Gracious God, we come to you today asking for forgiveness for our sins, for anything that has held us back or kept us away from you this day. God, for a few minutes, let us just stop and pause and whatever has happened this week, we just reflect on your grace, your mercy in us today. Lord, we pray for those that are going through extreme circumstances that are beyond their control. God, I just ask that you bring those folks peace. Lord, I pray for those that are sick, whether it be with the common cold, the flu, COVID, whatever it might be, that you will put your healing hands upon them. Lord, we pray for those that have gone through surgeries or are in the hospital, Lord. We just ask that you be with them and, and restore them. And Lord, we pray for those that are grieving the loss of someone as we get ready to go into the holidays, the, that empty spot at the table will be there. And Lord, I just ask that you put your warm, loving arms around those folks that are grieving the loss of someone today. Lord, we pray for our country and we pray for our nation. We pray for our leaders. Lord, we have a, a huge election coming up. And, and God, we just ask that you come and be a part of that of our nation restore us God Lord we thank you for every person that is here either on this lawn or watching online today God I just ask for a special blessing of peace of mercy and of comfort to each and every person that is engaged with you today Lord I thank you for being your humble servant to deliver your message. Let me stand behind the cross and let you take front and center stage and the words that are coming from my mouth be your words. May they rest upon our hearts and souls and that we just don't hear them but go live them today. God, we thank you for your son Jesus who you sent to us. And while he was here, he taught us a prayer that we lift up as a community to you today. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, children, Miss Gretchen has you. I see a lot of you already over there, so that's cool. A anybody that wants to go, children are adults, you know, if you want to hang out and go uh, hang out with Miss Gretchen for a few minutes, she's got a great, some crafts and stuff. Yeah, you can head over there. That's for sure. She's going to have a lot of fun with you all today. All right. So I want to thank Jim Dotson for delivering the message last week. Jim, uh, you know, I've, I've watched this message a couple different times. And we're in this, we're in this uh, sermon series where last year we talked about um, heroes of the Bible. And it just so happened they, they were all men. And so we decided, you know what, to make it fair, we're going to go back with four ladies of the Bible that are heroes in, in Scripture. But today you get an opportunity of hearing about two, so now you get the price of two for one uh, of heroes of ladies in the Bible, okay? So uh, we're going to recap real quick. First week we talked about Sarah, and a quality that Sarah has is loyalty. She was very loyal to Abraham, and she also was ready. She was on the ready at all times. When Abraham came in and, and God and the two angels appeared, he says, go make them some bread and get things ready to go, and, and she was always ready to be moved and to move. Last week, as Jim talked about, he was talking about uh, Mary Magdalene, and for those of you who were with us, what was the key word he, he talked about last week? Devotion. Devotion, that's right. How devoted Mary Magdalene was to Jesus and the commitment to the church, because Jesus was going to be uh, dead and buried and raised again, and he was going to have this church that was coming after. And he
people that were going to guide this church, this church that you see today. Okay? And today we get to talk about two people in Scripture that if you read their names, and, and I'm going to ask you here in a few minutes after I read this passage of Scripture, who all have heard these people before but just kind of maybe even looked over them or they didn't really mean anything or possibly you haven't heard them at all. Okay? So I'm going to read this passage of Scripture, and today what I want us to focus on are two things. Obedience, obedience particularly when it comes to God, and insignificance. I want you to think about those people in our lives that may feel like they are insignificant to who you are, or who you may feel like you are insignificant to. Okay, so let's get into this passage of Scripture today. We're going to be in Exodus. We're going to be in the Old Testament. Exodus 1. And we're going to start in, in uh, verse 8. It says, A new king came to power in Egypt who didn't know Joseph. He spoke to his people in alarm. There are way too many of these Israelites for us to handle. We've got to do something. Let's devise a plan to contain them, lest if there's a war they should join our enemies or just walk off and leave us. So they organized them into work gangs and put them to hard labor under gang foremen. They built the storage cities Pithom and Ramesses for Pharaoh. But the harder the Egyptians worked them, the more children the Israelites had, children everywhere. The Egyptians got so they couldn't stand the Israelites and treated them worse than ever, crushing them with slave labor. They made them miserable with hard labor, making bricks and mortar and backbreaking work in the fields. They piled on the work, crushing them under the cruel workload. The king of Egypt had a talk with the two Hebrew midwives. One was named Shifra and the other Pua. He said, When you deliver the Hebrew women, look at the sex of the baby, and if it's a boy, kill him, and if it's a girl, let him live. Let her live. But the midwives had far too much respect for God and didn't do what the king of Egypt ordered. They let the boy babies live. The king of Egypt called in the midwives. Why didn't you obey my orders? You've let those babies live. The midwives answered Pharaoh, The Hebrew women aren't like the Egyptian women. They're vigorous. Before the midwife can get there, they've already had the baby. God was pleased with the midwives. The people continued to increase in number, a very strong people. And because the midwives honored God, God gave them families of their own. So Pharaoh issued a general order to all his people. Every boy that is born, drown him in the Nile, but let the girls live. Now if you listen to this passage of scripture, you may think, man, Pharaoh was a meanie, right? This Pharaoh was, he was out for, out for blood, really. But if we look at this passage of scripture, this sets up God's salvation story. How many of you know that you are a part of God's salvation story? A few of you. By the end of this, I'm hoping everybody raises their hand. Okay? Because we are all part of God's salvation story. Now let's, let's focus in on this passage of Scripture. We start off with, the, this king did not know Joseph. And, and for those of you who may not know who he's talking about, Joseph, the coat of many colors. How many of you have heard that one? Okay? Joseph, who, who was thrown into the well by his brothers and left for dead. How many of you have heard of that guy? Joseph, who rescued those that were going into Egypt. Joseph, who took care of his brothers and his dad in the time of a famine. Joseph, who was second in charge to Pharaoh. And this Pharaoh had never heard of him. So it took me back to times in my life in which, you know, history... If you're not a history buff, you, you go back and you look at things in history and go, eh, that didn't really mean anything to me. I wasn't born then. I don't know who that baseball player was or that artist, that musical artist was. I don't really know anything about them. And how many of you have ever had somebody come up to you and maybe, let's say, uh, uh, an athlete. An athlete passes away. Say somebody like Lou Brock or Bob Gibson. And you weren't around in the 1960s or early 70s to watch Lou Brock or Bob Gibson. You would probably say, hmm, that doesn't really matter to me. I never watched them play. I didn't see. You ask somebody from the 60s or 70s who watched Cardinal Baseball, and they're going to look at you like, 
that's sacrilegious. Right? And so this Pharaoh was playing the sacrilege part of, I don't know who Joseph is. And you, I know there were people around him going, wait a minute, you don't know who rescued all these people who took care of the famine? You don't know that? And they go, no. And this Pharaoh says, by the way, I don't know him. And here's the even better part. I don't care. I don't care who Joseph is. Things are going to be done my way now. See, this Pharaoh was a ruler of jealousy. He had power, and he didn't want anybody else to get it. Think about it. Think about what I just said. Jealousy, power, didn't want anybody to get it. Because it's going to come to fruition here in a little bit, even in the New Testament. Okay? And as this Pharaoh goes on, he, he's, he, puts, he says, there's too many of these kids running around here. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love it when we have 700 kids running around here. I've always said that a church that is noisy is a church that is growing. And he has way too many kids running around here. He was saying that there's too many kids running around here. And by the way, he goes and runs and tells two ladies, two midwives. He says, if it's a boy, kill him. If it's a girl, let him live. Why do you think that was? Because he knew one of those boys were going to grow up. And one of those boys were going to take his spot. And he didn't like that very well. And he tells the two midwives, Shifra and Pua, and some of you, how many of you have heard of those ladies before? One person. That's probably the majority of people. Because if you say Shifra and Pua, you go, Hua? You've never heard of those folks before. You don't know what they stand for. And they're two midwives. And, and as you look at this, they're very insignificant to the day and age of the Middle East. Think about it today. Anybody know any midwives today? How many of you know midwives? How many of you are a midwife? <laughs> We've got one right here. And I'll be honest with you, as I read this passage of Scripture, Jessica, your head kept popping into my mind. I didn't mean that in a bad way. Yeah, you won't kill boy babies, no. But what, if we sit down and talk with a midwife, what happens with midwives? They form a relationship and they form a bond with the mama-to-be. And if a pharaoh is going to say, kill the baby, what are they going to say? Not me. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, you have a house full of boys, that's right. And, and, and one of the greatest quotes in here because as, as we would say back in my day, it would be, oh, he cut the Pharaoh down. What kids today would say, the midwives threw a little shade on Pharaoh. Said, the Hebrew babies, Hebrew women are tough. You Egyptian women are porcelain. That's basically what he was saying, the, the midwives to, to Pharaoh. Now, he didn't catch that. All he was thinking of is, the baby's got to die. The baby's got to die. Someone's going to take my spot. Sounds like a great worship service, right? And as he was looking at this, the, the women said, we're not going to do it. We know these moms. We know them way too well. We're as excited as they are to have this child. But what they didn't understand was what they were doing is... Out of their insignificance, God was saying, you're being obedient to me. You're taking care of these kids, and you're putting into motion my salvation story. Get that? This is God's salvation story. We all play a big part in it. So I want us to focus real quickly. I want you to think of the people in your life up to now, whether spiritual or just come in in a passing setting. And, and I want you to maybe even write them down. 
the people in your life that think that they're insignificant. That you go to them and you say, wow, you know this wouldn't have happened because of you, and they're the first person to go, ah, shucks. No, I was just doing my part. It didn't... I, I, I work with, as I said before, I work with a football team. I've got a bunch of coaches that it's the kids that put in all the hard work. Really. Because I'm sitting there with a bunch of coaches that have put in 75 to 80 hours of work on, on a couple plays on, for a Friday night football game. You, you think about it in, in, your, in your spiritual walk. Who's somebody that played a significant role that may have thought they were very insignificant in the role? As you go through life, you have those people in your life that just appear for... Sometimes you think to yourself, how in the world did I get met up with them? How did they cross my path? And they, for the life of them, are feeling like, ah, I didn't mean that much. When to you, it meant the world. And how many of them know it? How many of us take time to, to write a note and say, you know what, and maybe this happened years ago, so this is your challenge, this is your homework for the weekend, and those folks who are here for the first time are going, wait a minute, I didn't sign up for any of this. I didn't sign up for homework. Here's your homework for this week. Take a couple of those people and write a note to them, saying, you know, back in 19-whatever, or 2000-whatever, you said something to me that encouraged me, that made a difference, and I want you to know it. Maybe you send them a, don't send them a text. That's too impersonal. Call them. Call them or send them a letter. I don't know what it is about a note. I don't know what it is about a stamp these days, but man, it just goes a long way. How do you think that Pua and Shifra thought? They were just doing their job. And what happened was, is this guy by the name of Moses was born. See, Moses should have been dead on arrival. Moses, the same one that would go up against a pharaoh to say what? Let my people go. What I find rather fascinating with this passage of Scripture is that the two midwives who are so insignificant in the story are named. Shifra and who? You guys are going to get this by the end of the day, right? Who wasn't named in this story? The Pharaoh. Now, did he have a significant part in God's salvation plan? Yeah, sure he did. But he was never named. Now, a lot of historians and theologians will rack their brains, and I imagine if you go to the old Google sphere, you can figure out who it might be that the Pharaoh was. But in this passage of Scripture, the Pharaoh was not named. But two insignificant people who were obedient to God were. So that goes into a passage of Scripture that many of us know Here's where the Old Testament and the New Testament connect. There's a passage of Scripture called John 3.16. How many of you know John 3.16? How many of you could recite it for me right now? I'm just going to keep quiet and let you guys go. Exactly. Now, what's great about that passage of Scripture, boy, you guys start out, Ugh! for God so loved the world. And then, I know the rest of it. There's something in there. I just know there is. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have. Yeah. It's the salvation story. It was the salvation story that these two midwives ushered in. And then we go right into Matthew's story. Right after Jesus was born. And Herod, the king, says, wait a minute. When these wise guys, wise men, my bad. Wise men from the east come in 
and say, where's the king? And he goes, what king? Actually, he probably said, what king are we talking about? Well, not you. What? What king are you talking about? Oh, there's this little baby that was born. He's the king. He's going to be the king of the world. He's going to save us all. Really, can you please tell me where he is? And that's probably how it went down, right? And they said, well, he's over in Bethlehem. We followed a star. We've been walking a while, so the last thing we know is it probably could have happened two years to a year to two now, and, and he's probably almost two years old, but he's he's somewhere in that region. We're gonna go find him. Well, when you get there, will you do me a favor? Will you pick up your old cell phone and call me and tell me where he is? Because I would like to go pay homage to him as well. And Joseph discovers in a dream that Herod's not coming to pay homage. Herod's going to be just like the Pharaoh before. He wants to kill Jesus. Joseph hears from God, and God says, flee to where? Egypt. Egypt plays a big part in this whole story, right? Flee to Egypt. And then after that Herod had passed away, he receives word, go back to Nazareth. Leave Egypt, go back to Nazareth. That's the reason Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of being called a Nazarene. There's a lot in there, right? There's a lot in this passage of Scripture from two ladies we never heard of before today. Here's what I want you to leave here with today. Here's your challenge. Here's your homework. Okay? Think of the insignificant people that have meant a lot to you. I can think throughout my life, people that have crossed my path, and I sit back and go, how in the world did that happen? How, how in the world did I become the pastor of First Washington United Methodist Church? How did I get to become the pastor for all these wonderful people? How? That's God's design. I can think, I can name people in my head that have, uh, my, my parents, who gave me that foundation in, in, in the Catholic Church of, of becoming a child of God. I can think about people as I've, as I've walked along this journey that have walked beside me. And, and I can name them, I can see them by, by the name of Jim, and by the name of Steve, by the name of Catherine, by the name of Marilyn, by the name of, and you fill in the blank that have walked along and said, I, I am walking with you. How many of you can name a, a person such as Leroy? How many people can name somebody such as Henry? How many can name somebody such as Dennis? How many can name somebody such as Megan or Faith? How many of you can name that insignificant person in your life that thinks that they are insignificant? And how many of you are going to let them know today they were significant in who you are? How many of us have met a Pua and a Shifra? How many of us have met a Fred? And I have to admit right here, right now, I'm going to pause for a second because huh, the people who edit our videos that go online told me on Wednesday night, they said, boy, you seem like you were kind of a mean person. For those of you who do not know me, I hope that I don't have a mean bo bone in my body. I love humor, and I love people that give it back. I love dishing it, and I can take it. Okay? So if you don't know who I am, I love to laugh, and I love to make people laugh. And a couple weeks ago, we had a fire here. And in that fire, Dave asked beforehand, D Dave Lytle came up and said, if you feel cold, come up and warm your hands. And my buddy Fred who plays the bass, is standing there warming his hands. And I looked right at him, which is in parallel line with the camera, and go, what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm warming my hands. Because you warm my heart. And everybody goes, oh. Now, folks who are online who don't know me are going, 
man, why would I want to go to that church? He called that poor feller out. <laughs> right there, he was warming his hands. What people don't know is Fred is like my brother. And if I'm not giving him trouble, he would wonder why. He would say, why is he not making fun of me? Because I expect it back. So just to let you know, Fred plays a very significant part in my life. <laughs> yeah. Think about who the insignificant people are. Give them a call. Send them a card. Tell them, you mean the world to me. And second, here's our second thing. Where may I be obedient to God this week? What is the gift of the talent? And maybe it's going against the grain of when somebody gives you an order because in that passage of Scripture, they were women. And they were given an order. And women and men who did not follow the king's orders had the same fate as those babies were going to get. And for them to stand up to the Pharaoh and say, Sorry, pal, Hebrew women are tough, man. They just deliver babies like there's no tomorrow. And know that they were telling a little white lie? Spoke volumes. Spoke volumes to where God is going with our salvation story. Two things. Insignificant people, how may I be obedient to God? That's our challenge this week. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the words in Scripture from Exodus. We thank you so much for Shifra and Pua, who now we know just a little bit more about them, and maybe we will even go dive in and find out a little bit more about them, even though in Scripture this is the only place they're known. Lord, I just ask that you reveal the people who may feel like they are insignificant to us in our journey called life. It may be a co-worker. It may be someone, a, a, a fellow student or a former student. It, it may be a parent or a godparent. Or it may be a grandparent. It may just be a friend that came into a life because we have friends that come into our life and then leave our lives for whatever reason. And it may have been at that point in time that our lives were changed. God, wherever that is, just allow us to have the knowledge of who these people are and to let them know they played a significant part in our lives. And God, we just ask that wherever we can be obedient to you this week, sometimes it's a challenge to look outside of ourselves because we've got so much going on in our, in our lives and in our world today that it consumes us. But God, I just ask that you take away some of those things so that we can see where we can be obedient to you. Lord, I thank you for your son Jesus. I thank you for his going to the cross and dying for my sins, for the sins of the people that are sitting here, for the sins of the people that are online, so that your salvation story may be obtained through his resurrection. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. At this time, we will do communion. And each and every person, I hope that you all got your communion cups. If you did not, just raise your hand real quick, and we'll make sure we get one to you. Now, if this is your first time here with us, it's kind of tricky if you've never done this before. There's a little plastic piece up here. It coats over the top of the purple. So you'll have to pull that plastic piece first back, and then that releases the host. Okay? And then you release the purple and that will re release the, the grape juice. Well, unless you break it. And then you, you hope to have enough tab left to pull. <laughs> All right. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. He lifted it up to heaven and gave thanks and said, Take and eat, for this is my body which will be given up for you. A few moments later, he took the cup and lifting it up to heaven, he gave you thanks and praise and said, take and drink 
For this is the cup of the new and everlasting covenant which will be shed for you and for all people so that all sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Now we have some folks coming around with trash cans. Marilyn and Rachel will come around with the trash can. If you can just dispose of those cups in that trash can, that will be awesome. Let's pray. Gracious God, again, I thank you so much for communion. Lord, it is a reminder of the words of why you came, a part of the salvation plan, a part of the salvation story. Through your death on a cross and your resurrection from the grave, we have the opportunity of coming into a knowledge and relationship with you. Lord, I thank you again for your son Jesus, and it's in his name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. Okay, everybody, if you could uh, please stand for our last closing song.
think that you're insignificant in this world but God knows better and there are people out there that know better so today as you leave here think about a time in your life that has been changed it may be right now it may be through the baptism of a child it may be through the words of Scripture. It may through, be through that song right there. Because worthy is God for our best, our very best, as we move forward the rest of this week. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Gracious God, thank you so much for everything that you have given us. I thank you so much for the people that have gathered here on this lawn, those that are gathering online. Lord, I just ask that you show up in their life and show off in their life. God, I just ask that you be a part of who we are so that we can know that we are a part of your salvation story. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. Have a great week.